we've already talked about the value chain. The supply chain is a little bit different than the value chain. We looked at the primary value chain activities, inbound logistics operations, outbound logistics, marketing and sales, service, and then those secondary support activities. They're related but different. And so here's the difference between the supply chain and the value chain. Uh, the difference is that the supply chain is the process of all parties involved in fulfilling a customer request, while a value chain is a set of interrelated activities a company uses to create a competitive advantage. Let's look at an example. For Coca-Cola, the branding Coca-Cola is a huge part of Coke's competitive advantage, and that is part of their value chain, but that's not part of the supply chain. The supply chain is the inbound logistics operations, outbound logistics for the most part. Uh, and let's go ahead and, and even simplify our definition of supply chain a little bit more. The supply chain is the connected chain of all of the business entities that perform or support the logistics function, sometimes called the middlemen. And uh, everyone's probably heard this uh, t saying at one time or another, hey, let's go ahead and eliminate the middleman and save money. Eliminate the middleman and save money. When does this work? Well, it's really, really simple. It makes sense to eliminate the middleman when the cost of the middleman is more than the value of services provided by the middleman. And so sometimes we will want to eliminate the middleman, and a lot of times we won't. And so let's go ahead and look at the supply chain. And since we've talked about Coke so many times, let's go ahead and shift gears and use Pepsi as our example. Uh, so now Pepsi's supply chain, and the main three things again are inbound logistics, operations, and outbound logistics. So inbound logistics, uh, what are those things? Those are all the things that are going to go into what are eventually the product, the Pepsi product. And so what is that? Well, it's pretty darn simple. It, what, what's going to go into that Pepsi product? Well, let's see. We're going to have water. We're going to have uh, flavorings. We're going to have a package with a label uh, and a top. And we're going to add some, uh, you know, some, some gas to it uh, for carbonation. And that's about it. So there's what's going to be coming in inbound logistics into the plant to make Pepsi. We're going to have the bottle. Now that's what one of those big bottles looks like before they uh, blow it up and fill it with Pepsi. It comes in, it looks kind of like a very, very hard uh, test tube, but then uh, when they heat it and blow it up, it becomes quite big. Now to make a Pepsi, they're going to take the fountain syrup and then add it to the carbonated water. Uh, then they're going to put it in the package. If it's a can, they're going to put the can in a uh, sleeve, like that 12-pack sleeve, you know, or bottles. Put them in a corrugated box. Uh, that ADM Archer Daniels Midland uh, truck there. That is sugar uh, coming in uh, so-called corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup. That of course will be added to the uh, rest of the product. Now, inside the Pepsi facilities, it's probably going to look like this. Stuff comes in the door, uh, and then it gets sorted in the ingredient department. Uh, lots of uh, you know things are you know washed and rinsed, uh, mixed and blended, uh, and then the uh, packages are filled. Then they're capped. Then they're labeled, coded. They'll make sure everything's, you know, clear with the inspection. And then they're getting ready to put them out the door, you know, for uh, warehouse and delivery. Okay, let's talk about out the door. That, of course, is outbound logistics. Uh, put them on the uh, trucks and get them out of here. Uh, again, that's the main three things in the supply chain, the inbound logistics, the operations, and the outbound logistics. The value chain components, you know, marketing and sales, service, that's not really a part of it. Let's look at a different company. Let's look at uh, Hewlett Packard's supply chain. Hewlett Packard makes computers. So uh, coming in, uh, in the supply chain, those would be things like the raw materials that are going to go into that computer, 
plastic, aluminum, copper, you know, maybe they'll already have some parts that are already complete, like the Intel chips, the Microsoft Windows software, maybe a hard drive might come from Seagate, one of the leading producers of hard drives, or it might be a CD-ROM, maybe that comes from Sony. Those things will then all be assembled, the raw materials will be fabricated, uh, and then with the component parts assembled at the manufacturer, in this case Hewlett Packard, and then it will go out outbound logistics to their uh, resellers uh, like CompUSA, Best Buy, maybe an online uh, reseller like CDW.com, and then ultimately to the uh, customers. The supply chain distribution partners generally provide uh, logistics and physical distribution functions, and two of the most important things are Breaking bulk, now breaking bulk is purchasing large quantities of goods to sell uh, one or a few at a time. That's one of the big things that they'll do. They will break bulk. And the other major thing is they will create assortments, providing variety of products in one location. And breaking bulk, creating assortments are, you know, two of the most important functions of these distribution partners. Let's take a couple of examples of how that works. And let's start with Campbell Soup. Now, Campbell Soup makes soup in their facilities. There's a Campbell facility in New Jersey. Uh, they make soup, lots of top quality Campbell soups, and then they put them on trucks, you know, and ship them off to their customers. Or let's let's take a more delicious product, M&Ms, uh, a product of the M&M Mars company. Uh, and so they make lots and lots of M&Ms uh, in there. They also make Mars uh, chocolate bars and so on. Then they put them on their trucks and send them off to their customers. You've heard me talk about Heinz Ketchup a whole bunch. There's a Heinz Ketchup uh, facility in Pittsburgh, you know, making lots and lots and lots of bottles of Heinz Ketchup. Then they're going to put them on a truck and send them off to their customers. So uh, the first thing we want to do is, is break bulk because those things are all going out in bulk. They're not going directly to the store, you know, whether it's a regular grocery store or maybe a Walmart store. The first they're going to go not to the retail store, but to the warehouse. Or in the case of Walmart, they're going to go directly to Walmart, not to an independent wholesaler, but they will go to Walmart's warehouse, which is called the distribution center, the Walmart distribution center. And let's go ahead and take a look at how that's going to work. Those trucks, whether it's the Heinz truck or the Mars truck, you know, or the Campbell's truck, that's going to show up at the Walmart distribution center over on the side that has the receiving doors. So those receiving doors are where those trucks are going to back up, and then they're going to unload their uh their contents, then they're going to go inside into the Walmart distribution center where they're going to be put in their specific location. Walmart hopes that they're not in there very long because they want to send them out to individual stores. Uh, that's the purpose of the distribution center, bring full trucks of things like ketchup, uh, M&Ms, uh, and Campbell Soup in, and then they want to ship them out to individual stores. So they're going to have truck trucks uh, coming up to the shipping doors there. And of course, those are going to be Walmart trucks heading out to individual Walmart stores. Now they've created assortments, so on that truck is going to be a few cases of ketchup and a few cases of M&Ms and a few cases of Campbell soup and a few cases of this and that. That truck's going to show up at the individual Walmart, and then those goods are going to show up on the shelf there. So back to that issue, eliminate the middleman and save. You know, well, when does this not work? When the middleman provides those functions uh, more inexpensively than if they were not there. So in the case of, you know, M&Ms, it's a lot easier for you to go get M&Ms at Walmart than to buy them directly from the M&Ms uh, candy company, M&M &M Mars. So they're going to go through their distribution through Walmart so that you can then go into the Walmart store and pick them up. That's the benefit of the middleman there who creates, who breaks bulk and creates assortments. You know, if anything, those intermediaries reduce 
the number of transactions. If there weren't intermediaries, you know, every buyer would have to deal with every single supplier of products. So you'd have to deal with Clairol for your shampoo and Duracell for your batteries and Kleenex for your tissues and Rubbermaid for your plastic wear and on and on and on. Well, it's a lot easier to let all of those people deal with Walmart and then you just deal with Walmart. So uh, all those guys send truckloads of their products to the Walmart Distribution Center, then Walmart Distribution Center breaks bulk, creates assortments, sends them out to their stores, and then individual consumers come into their stores and buy them. It's a lot uh, more efficient than everybody interacting you know, with the uh, original suppliers.